Hi, I'm Kevin Alves. I play Teen Travis on Yellow Jackets, and this is Pop Culture with Pat. Hey guys, welcome back to Pop Culture with Pat. So really tonight, uh, excited on today's episode, we have a special guest. Uh, he plays young Travis on the show Yellow Jackets, which is currently showing on Showtime right now. Calvin Alves, thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, no problem, man. So to start, you know, just to kind of, I guess, like start things off, you know, as far as like the show. And by, by the way, guys, um, you know, this will, you know, have some like spoilers in here. So if you guys aren't caught up, uh, you know, to the, what, episode nine, because the finale comes out this week. So if you yeah. guys aren't caught up, just a heads up. But uh, yeah, just to start things off, can you just talk about, you know, what attracted you to, you know, the show itself and then specifically the role of Travis? Um, I think the first thing uh, when I got the audition, uh, I thought what was, first of all, I thought then like just getting to work on Showtime, the network itself seemed like a really great opportunity. I, I really like a lot of work that comes out of Showtime. Um, but then when I got to read, um, you know, what the role was about, uh, such a complex character it was really intriguing to kind of uh, find the nuances in someone who maybe isn't the most likable at times and uh, and find a way to justify that you know yeah now yeah, I say at, at first you know Travis is kind of you know standoffish but he, he kind of he has his reasons but he's definitely he's grown on me you know throughout the show for sure yeah, I don't know if he's grown on everyone else quite yet, but <laughs> but that's but that's okay. Honestly, I I really enjoyed um, being able to work on a character where it was my job to justify everything this person was doing to myself, um, and then to go back and now watch it and just want to hit him over the head every episode with <laughs> the actions that he actually does do, and um, and so yeah, it's been it's been a whirlwind of kind of seeing everyone's reactions to him. It's a huge spectrum of like, depending on, on kind of what people are expecting from him versus what he does. Uh, it changes how, how much people can find any sort of likability in him or not. And, you know, the biggest thing I do is I kind of remind everyone that this is a teenage boy in the nineties who isn't, who isn't super educated in the things that we are now in 2021. And so, you know, he's, a, he's acting according to what he knows and um and that's not necessarily going to be what we feel is right in this moment now yeah but that's what that's one of the things too that i really you know i love about the show is just that um you know none of the characters are perfect i mean which is a good represent uh representation of of everybody because i mean no one nobody's perfect in the world and and i always like myself i i always tend to i really connect with you know with like flawed characters i just think you know there's so much uh you know more interesting so i can see that why that's been it's been such a a ride for you to play this character you know so far yeah it's uh he's he's so he's so flawed like so many of us but there's there's just something interesting about putting him in a scenario where it is an incredibly female driven um you know kind of story and even his everyday life is is now female driven in this in this new reality that he's in and to kind of it's kind of enjoyable to see him be put in his place, if that makes sense. There's there's something that he, you know, I think it's good that he's put in his place. I, mean, I think it's good that he's 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 being taught lessons by these young, strong women on the show. I think that's incredible. Yeah, and I mean for for the show, I, I like when I first like got into it. You know, I remember seeing the trailer. I uh, wasn't really sure like what to expect, but it's definitely been you know pretty uh, brutal. You know, definitely like a, a primal you know show like overall. <laughs> Did you do anything, you know, special to kind of, you know, prepare for this role for yourself? Um, no, we took it one day at a time. Honestly, it was a quick turnaround. I had just finished Lock and Key um, probably less than a month before I went in to do this show. So it was a really fast, like I was there and then I was there. And, uh, and so, yeah, I think it was like three weeks separated between when I actually left. So it was quick, but um, the most important thing in terms of prep was that I got to sit down with just the writers and the creators and the producers and just have a talk about like what, what I needed to do to be ready um, for this and, um, and kind of what the role was going to entail and, and where he was going to be going. And so that I could just mentally prepare for that as well a bit. Um, but then on the show, you know, we did some physical stuff, which was really cool. Like in episode two, when I get to climb the tree and, you know, I remember the day that we were shooting that they brought me in for rehearsal in the morning 
And I just turned to Jeff, our stunt coordinator, and I was like, okay, what am I allowed to do? What will they let me legally get away with doing today? And so, you know, I had to keep showing them and proving to them that I could do a certain amount of the stunt work. And so it was cool on the tree uh, stunt. I got to do 40 feet harnessed. I got to go 40 feet up in the air harnessed, uh, climbing the tree. And then unharnessed, I got to do like just over 15 feet above. Um, because that's what we were allowed to do. And so I kind of made them let me do whatever was allowed I wanted to do. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, and so, so are you one of those like actors? Do you, do you always try to do whatever you can as far as like stunts and stuff like that goes? You want to try to be in the action as much as possible? Yeah, I'm not going to be a hero um, <laughs> in the sense of like, if, if there's something that I don't think I can do justice for, then yeah, then bring the stunt coordinator in and let's figure out when I can swap out and what what's the right move um but if I have the time to get ready and 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 the right team to help me get ready for that then yeah I want to do as much as possible I always want to do as much as possible like any of those falls like in episode nine if you see like when I just smoke myself like we did that straight up I had a nice bruise for a few days and it was okay though I really wanted to do it and really wanted to make it work so and we really are just falling like they pad the dirt up so they make the dirt fluffier, but that's, that's it. You're just, you're still, you're still, you're still falling. Oh, um, it, it was super fun to get to do as, you know, I think we had uh, a couple different um, stunt doubles come in uh, throughout the show. And I think we've used one stunt double for one shot of the last like five feet, 10 feet in the air of the tree climb because they wouldn't let me do it. And that's it, everything else I got to do. My, my stunt doubles were amazing though because they helped me prepare. They're not just stunt doubles, they helped me prepare so that I can do it. Yeah. Uh, so that was really cool. Yeah, I had Martin and Carlos and they were both really great in terms of helping me get ready, which was fun. That's super cool. I mean, I, I feel like it, it um, you know, doing, being able to do that, you know, some of that stuff too, I feel like it just kind of immerses you more, you know, in the role as well, just being able to do, those additional things, you know, for your, your character too. It's super fun. You know, there's so many days on film sets that people don't realize that they, they feel very like quick and easy in the sense of like, you don't get a lot done. Cause sometimes it takes a long time to shoot very small, small chunks of the, of the show. And so it was cool to have days like that, where at the end of the day, you know, you just worked so hard physically to make it happen and to get the shot. And, uh, and even we had a bunch of stuff in the, in the tree, uh, in studio where we were, we were on top and, uh, it, it was just, we did a whole day of me in the tree one time and you just finish that day and you're like, oh man, that was a, that was a hardworking day. And so, uh, yeah, it makes you feel really, really happy to get to be a part of projects like that. Yeah. And then I imagine too, like you said yourself, cause where you, you know, you watch this uh, show just to get to see the finished you know, product like afterwards, like as well. Now, as far as, um, you know, one of the things that with, you know, Yellow Jackets, uh, it really focuses on, you know, the relationships of, you know, these characters. There's some that are made stronger, some that are broken, you know, here in this, like, you know, this first season. Can you just talk about the relationships of the cast, you know, behind the scenes, you know, what it's been like working on, you know, the project with all of them? And just was there any like, you know, bonding stories from you guys kind of working on this thing as well? Yeah, I think I think any time that you work on a project where you guys are on set in group stuff. So in this show in particular, we have in every episode, we have at least one group scene because with these survivors, the, they're working together, right? Like the people who are stranded. So we always had at least one group scene in episodes. So that was really cool because those days were hectic on set. Like I think for production, they were like, oh no. <laughs> but for us, it was fun because everyone got to be there together on those days and we got to bond. I think, I think what happened is because this show was shot when everyone still had to quarantine for two weeks before doing the show, if you're coming from out of the country, uh, everyone got to get to know each other really well right at the beginning. And also um, we had a lot of great bonding times at, um, so we stayed at a hotel because when we were shooting in the wilderness, they would take us out there for a week and then we would stay in a hotel for four days, not in our normal residences. And so we'd all be on the same floor in a hotel room every week that we were shooting. So, you know, uh, it kind of felt like summer camp in that sense. Uh, so we would all get together and, you know, lots of singing and, and games and fun. And, and yeah, I'm actually gonna post a bunch of like behind the scenes stuff finally on on TikTok and Instagram. And they're pretty, they're pretty funny. We got some cakes in the faces and, so it was it was a good time in that sense for sure and and then you get and then you kind of like 
find the people that you really mesh well with and, and you get along and then you go on adventures with them and road trips. And it, it was a fun experience getting to know a bunch of this cast. Yeah. Yeah, no, it sounds like it was for sure. And I mean, I, I think just like the, you know, you can tell that you guys, you know, you have like the, the chemistry as well. It comes across, you know, on the screen. So it definitely, it, it sounds like it was, you know, it was a fun time. Um, as far as like, you know, the show too. So what's crazy is that it, it tackles like several different genres, you know, whether it's, thriller, uh, drama, a little bit of, you know, comedy thrown in every now and yeah. then, uh, you know, definitely horror thrown in as well. For you, which element do you enjoy the most about the show? Ooh, it had to be the comedy, the, the subtle comedy that we found in there. I think one of my favorite scenes to shoot in the whole show is episode six with uh, Steven, um, who plays coach Ben Scott. And we have this whole scene that he comes to have the talk with me. And, uh, and it was probably my favorite scene to shoot because, you know, to be in this out of this world situation and to have such a real normal, honest conversation about something like sex <laughs> is really, really funny to me. And, uh, so those, I think were my, my favorite things to shoot. And then the action stuff, uh, drama just felt like we were in the drama all the time so it, you know it was nice to break out of that I love the drama but it was always nice to have scenes that we'd break out of that a little bit and I think in episode nine we had a little bit of that as well um but also I, I don't know I, I just think I love wherever the role goes like when we have episode nine where for Travis there's some horror involved right. uh, <laughs> uh, that was super fun to shoot too um Daisy was our director on that and uh I remember she really let me kind of take a little bit of lead with trying to figure out how we were going to shoot that scene where everyone's everywhere and 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 we're trying to figure out like what is the order of things that are going to happen and and what are my reactions and I remember we had this really thoughtful conversation in terms of how when Travis is facing forward that's like his real world uh you know that's when he's scared and tripped out and freaking out and then when he's like up and looking everywhere you'd see his enjoyment at different times and so there was like this like conflicting idea and so getting to do stuff like that that had that horror element brought to it and that scary element brought to it I think was uh was also a lot of fun so honestly I, I couldn't I couldn't choose I, I just think uh I just think the role is super three-dimensional so it's super fun and I was gonna so so is that overall as far as like episodes so far in this first season would you say is episode nine the one that stands out to you like the most like as your favorite oh that's that's really tough. Um, it was the most challenging physically in terms of figuring out what we were doing. So blocking wise and all that. Um, but there's just some really standout scenes that I that I really like from other episodes that I loved shooting in episode six. There's a great scene that I do with Sophie Thatcher, where she pretty much, you know, puts me in place. And because I, I try and, uh, you know, explain things to her in a in a very like rude way. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I, I loved shooting that scene because there was, you know, there was a lot of depth in that scene and, and it was a nice piece to work on. And then episode eight, I think, and uh, doing the, you know, spoiler alert, doing the breakup scene with, uh, with uh, Sophie Thatcher again was really, really cool because we found and tried to really look for like the pain in their toxic relationships and in their toxic actions so you know you have these two people who clearly just want to be together here like they want to be together but they can't let their pride and and other things get in the way and uh both both with travis and and even the way that uh, natalie comes back at travis and we see that in her future self as well with how toxic she can be with the character of kevin and so there's there's some really interesting stuff in those episodes so it, but in terms of shock value, I think for everyone as a viewer, I think nine is definitely the standout. Oh yeah. Nine. When I watched that, you know, this past weekend, and I was just like, I mean, you saw the previews, so you knew some crazy stuff was going to happen, but when it got down to that, you know, the whole like chase scene and just like, I mean, I, I knew that you were going to survive uh, just because, you know, we know what happened with the character, like in the future, yeah. But I was like, I was still still kind of, you know, scared for the character because I was like, you know, you see um, Sean, I like grab like the knife or whatever. And I was just like, holy crap, I can't imagine being out in the middle of the woods. You know, these people, they're all on drugs and who knows what else is happening, you know, supernatural elements or whatever. But uh, and you just running through, <laughs> through the woods being chased by all these, you know, these girls. So that must have yeah. been quite the scene. 
It was, it was crazy. And, and it was a lot of fun to do. Uh, the amazing act, actors and actresses on the show really got into it. And, uh, and so it was, it was, it was fun to, to shoot the chase stuff, but there's no question that, you know, I, I have my favorite tweets after episode nine where people being like, I know, tr- I, I forgot for a second that he survives. <laughs> They're like, I forgot for a second that he survives. And so it was, uh, it was fun to see everyone's reactions to it, but there's definitely going to be some repercussions of that night. I think everyone can see that coming. There's no question that there's repercussions of a night like that. And just can't, and just go completely back to normal, especially for a guy like Travis. Oh yeah, no, I definitely, I can't wait to see, you know, what's going to happen in the, uh, in the finale for sure. And you were, and you were kind of just, you know, talking about this, but um, even though like, obviously there is, you know, toxic elements to the relationship, I do like, you know, the relationship between Travis and Natchez, because while there's issues, you know, we do find out that Travis is, you know, super important to Natalie, like in the future. Um, so just, you know, what was it like overall working with, you know, Sophie and just what kind of conversations did you guys have about the relationship between like the characters? I know you spoke a little bit on it, but. Yeah, Sophie is such a professional and and incredibly talented. So it was a pleasure working with her this season. Um, have it, we we had conversations right from the start and uh, and kind of we knew we both agreed very quickly that it was okay for it to be toxic. Like we had to accept that very early on knowing that like, it's okay for these teenage kids to not know how to handle things, not know how to cope with each other, not know how to express their feelings at the right time. It was okay. And so, and we knew that based on the future storyline that this was going to have to go places that, you know, neither one of us would like to go as, as people, but our characters are willing to. And so, um, it was, it was fun exploring kind of where their edges, where's their lines and then watch when one crosses one line and then the other crosses another line. And so um, we were lucky that we had Deepa Mehta, who's a fantastic director, do episode four with us um, and kind of set a baseline because that episode is where they find their common ground, their common pain. And they, it, it's sad in many ways and beautiful at the same time that they, they connect through their pain and that's the truth. And so um it was a really nice episode to do with Deepa she uh she was very gentle and careful with that relationship with us and and building that in that episode and so that was really beautiful to have happen and then you know I think both of us had a hard time just like breaking it apart when we got to episode eight and there was a it was tough but I I think I think there's no question as we know like there is clearly some more figuring out for them in the future because we know that their relationship lasts a lot longer than those four episodes yeah yeah no for sure and uh as far as like the show goes too one of the things that i i I love about it which to me it could have been you know kind of like risky but uh this uh storytelling format of the show so you know it cuts back and forth from what happened in the 90s to the present um and i feel like that can be risky sometimes just because if you know, you know, like certain characters, you know, like we know some of the survivors who are, who are there, I feel like sometimes that can be a detriment to like the story, but I feel like the way that Yellow Jackets does it, they do it, you know, really well. Um, when you joined the show just, and you saw this format, that was the format they, they were going with. What were your thoughts, you know, going into the show? Oh, I immediately just like bowed down to Ashley and Bart because when I read the first episode and the second and we just kept getting episodes and I went it's incredible how they've people maybe just don't realize how impossible it is to not give away too much in such an intricate dual timeline story right like it's really hard not to give things away in the past and in the future (laughs) and so for them to keep people on their seat every week wondering what's going on I understand as a viewer that that can be frustrating but it's the only way that this format works is to make you just a little frustrated that you don't have this answer and you should in your mind. Um, And so they do such an incredible job. And I I was, I was in love with it the minute I saw it. Um, And yeah. And I think we see some beautiful, beautiful parallels between the past and the, and the future in episode 10. Um, And so I'm really excited for everyone to see that. Yeah. There's one of my, one of my favorite transitions 
and choices and song choices in episode 10. It's just, it's, it's pretty cool. And, and I'm interested to see what viewers kind of pick up on those changes and those parallels between the past and the future, because that's what this show does well, is they give you something in the past in episode 10 that relates to episode four in the future. And then, you know, or episode, or you'll see the opposite where you'll be like something that we heard of in episode four in the future. Now we see that in, in the past. And so there's, there's a lot of parallels, which I think are really beautiful. I love going on Reddit and seeing everyone like kind of just finding every little connection. And so I'm, I'm excited for everyone to see the finale. Oh yeah. And I've been, you know, I've been covering uh, the last, you know, a couple episodes too. And just like between that and, and Facebook and uh, just yeah. seeing, you know, all the different, you know, theories and stuff like that pop up. Um, what, for you, I guess, like, you know, without obviously giving any spoilers away for the, for the finale, but what have been some of your favorite, like, theories or, or things that you've seen on, you know, Reddit or social media in general? Oh, there's, there's, there's way too many. Like, I, I can't even, like, I can't even describe to you how I, I get lost in Reddit sometimes with everyone. Like, I think it's Monday. Like, I always wait. I let Sunday happen, and then everyone comments, and then overnight happens. And then Monday, I just sit there, and I go for approximately forever. Uh, <laughs> um, I, can, I can understand that. <laughs> but there have just been some fantastic theories on, you know, just like, uh, Javi and and, oh, yeah. and 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 his relation to the future in that sense like what everyone was thinking and yeah. then um, there's some really cool I, I love the theories also on what people are thinking is going to happen with the relationships and, and and in the past and like uh, who's surviving and then everyone loves you know like the theories on pick girl as everyone calls it on reddit and yeah and, and it's antler just queen. yeah antler queen aq yeah. and it's just it's it's there's been some really interesting theories and again a show that kind of kind of it's giving you answers without giving you answers all the time and and i think that that's really really fun and interesting and i love that this show was originally planned with a five season arc like to know that you want to go there is really cool which i didn't know that either i actually i just saw that um it was like an interview or something like this week that i had saw that that was like that's the plan which is is interesting because i was like are they, is this just kind of like a limited series thing? But then I saw that you guys had, you know, got picked up at least for the season two. So I was like, okay, you know, we got two seasons. Good, because it's, nothing's more frustrating, you know, as like, which I'm sure is like an actor too, but as a viewer, like going into a, like a new show and then like a show, you know, doesn't last and it's like you're left on like a cliffhanger or whatever. So seeing that you guys were picked up so early was awesome. But hearing that it was pitched with like a five season arc is definitely, you know, exciting. Yeah, and it was it was super cool because I wasn't part of the pilot originally, um, so I brought I got written into the show when once they were picked up and then we got to shoot that those two small scenes in the pilot as reshoots, yeah. um, and so it was just it's it's really cool to kind of like see how excited everyone has been like in our renewal uh, for season two and uh, it was a quick renewal which was super cool and yeah. uh, and come on like look at the look at Melanie Linsky, Julia Lewis, Christina Ricci, Tani Sif, right? like it's just incredible. It's brilliant. Oh, so they're they're fantastic and I can't wait to see them keep doing their thing. And uh, you know for you too cuz I know uh, myself as well like you know we grew up in the 90s uh, and one of the things for me one of the charm about the show like even though granted you guys are you know out in the woods and it's not necessarily like in school and stuff like that but it it takes place in the 90s so that's part of the charm for me just like that nostalgia. Uh, so what was it like for you to revisit that decade, you know, to a degree? Uh, I think the first time that I realized we were in the 90s is when um, we were doing my tests for hair. Yeah. And, and then they gave me that first, that middle part, the, the Travis middle part that is so 90s, the Aaron Carter um, middle part. And uh, I was like, oh, okay, this is where we are. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> I was like, let's do this. And even like, you know, Travis wears like these oversized jeans. that are like, And it's just, it's really cool. I remember one time I walked on set and Bart turns to me, the writer, creator, and he's, he's like, I had that exact outfit <laughs> and we just had a good laugh. And uh, I actually have a picture of um, uh, wearing a shirt from that our camera guy actually has and wears and it's really cool. That's yeah. awesome. That, that must have been fun. Yeah. I know for me, I mean, it's obviously I, I was born in 90s. So just like, yeah, getting to see all that, the, the song references and stuff like that, you know, that's always, always fun. And 
nostalgia, especially the past several years, has been such a big thing in in film and in you know television and stuff like that. And the music is just yeah, the music is so perfect. Like I remember episode two with Misty, the music that they used, ah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I went and I I went through and I'm like, up. Oh, I gotta just like go through and make a playlist of all the uh, the Yellow Jackets, you know, song just so I have them all in one place because it's a great you know soundtrack. Now question for you so out of all of the characters on the show who do you think you would connect with the most as kevin alves out there instead of travis and why hmm that's a really good question that's 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 top-notch question here <laughs> hey. um, okay. so let's say like kevin alves circa 17 yep. like uh circa yeah, yeah yeah, I think I think I went through a period of time where I really wanted to just like be in the know because as a figure skater growing up and, and 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 traveling, I traveled a lot for figure skating, so I wasn't at school very much. Um, I I didn't get to have like those close knit friends except for in skating, so I was always trying to like kind of keep up and keep friends. And so there's that like really interesting quality about like you know Mari who has that with Jackie, like is just trying to be Jackie's friend at first. And so I think, I think that's a character I definitely get along with. Um, and then, um, yeah, I just, I, and then I, I just, the innocence of hobby. I think, I think nobody, like you, you, you just want to like hang out with hobby and just sit there. Like, I'm so mad Travis doesn't spend enough time with hobby, you know, because yeah. uh, of their relationship necessarily. And you know how they've had, they've been through a lot, but it would be really cool to, uh, to see to just see kevin hanging out with hobby <laughs> it was nice though the uh the last you know episode we did see it had that little um you know that brother moment where he was showing yeah. how to like you know do the tie and everything so there is like even though don't maybe get as much time there is like those little moments that are definitely you know like in there for sure yeah it was really nice having the moment back in in four with the ring and and just a few little things and they they yeah they have their back and forth but it was really that moment in nine was it was really nice to even shoot just to have that time with uh with luciano who's such a really talented young actor and i'm really excited to see the things that he does it's exciting and now as far as you know the finale goes so it's it's coming up we're you know handful of days like away from it so obviously, you know, we, we've mentioned a few things a little bit like here throughout the interview, but, you know, without giving any, any kind of spoilers, you know, what can fans uh, look forward to in the season finale of Yellow Jackets? I think they can look forward to a lot of twists and turns like that. It's it's a lot of twists and turns. Um, I think there's going to be a decent amount of confrontation on both ends of this show. Um, and um yeah, and then I th I think it to me it, in some ways it yeah it's a, it's 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 heartbreaking and beautiful and it's 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 a really really great episode. I I I think we end the season with that suspense that we you need, and uh, I'm really I'm really excited for everyone to see it. Yeah, and you mentioned you said what it sounds like one of your favorite moments or sequences is is in this episode. So yeah. definitely excited to you know to see that. Uh, you know, is there anything else that you want to say to the fans out there? And, um, you know, where can fans also catch you next? You know, whether it's, you know, Yellow Jacket season two, Lock and Key, any other projects that you're able to talk about that you want fans to keep an eye out for? Yeah, nothing I can say as of yet. <laughs> that we can't, 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 can't get there too quick. But um, I'm just so thankful for all the fans that have come in and, and have pushed the show on every family member and every friend that they can possibly think of. I think that that's the beauty of this week to week format that Yellow Jackets has had. And it's really gotten people on board. And I'm so thankful for everyone who's just kind of really put that work in to help support us and support the show and, and, and a story that is um, really, really great and, and truthful um, and yet out of this world. So it's, uh, I'm I'm thankful and I I can't wait and I hope that the every everything keeps coming together the way everyone wants and uh, and that it keeps everyone on their toes. I definitely I have no doubt that it will definitely do that and and uh, you know I, I've been telling everyone you know because I started watching the show and I feel like it's just one of those shows like it's it's definitely starting to 
to grow and like obviously you guys it's popular enough where you guys you know already got picked up but i feel like it's one of those shows that just not enough people are watching like i feel like there needs to be a much bigger crowd for this um but i mean the fans that you guys have already are so you know passionate i you know whether it's like i said between like my videos or just like seeing it online people are really you know invested in the show invested in the characters so can't wait to see what happens with the season finale this week and then obviously what happens with season two and, and hopefully we get the uh you know the rest of that five-year plan as well so hey yeah uh, kevin thank you so much for you know for coming on the show for talking all things yellow jackets and you know just taking time out of your schedule i, I really appreciate that no thank you and thank you for our interest in our show and then and, and hopefully we get to do this again definitely hi i'm kevin alvis i play teen travis on yellow jackets and this is pop culture with pat <laughs>